We're on. It's on? Okay. We're this is uh, 111782. This is an interview with writer Max D. Barnes for Country Music Inquirer magazine. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to try to talk about several different things, Max, but uh, you have been on. Uh, why don't you tell me something about your singing career, too, because I'm going to write about that also. Well, shit. <laughs> I've sung a song or two. <laughs> um, okay, how many labels have you been on? Well, it's uh, every country that it's in in uh, in Europe uh, is on a different label, so it's a lot of different ones. I'm on eleven in eleven different countries over in Europe. Uh, you you're currently on a <coughs> on a European uh, you you have albums out in Europe is that correct right singles also right and but you're not recording for an American company at this time no not at this moment and, but uh, who was it that you recorded for before I was on uh, Polydor label and a couple of small labels before that and Ovation label okay here in the states <coughs> uh, <coughs> actually how how long have you been writing songs. Well, probably since I could reach the wall of the toilet. <laughs> um, now, going back, I suppose, where, where I got seriously... I didn't seriously start writing songs to be a songwriter. I seriously started writing songs for a hobby. And uh, that was probably in the uh, early 60s. But you'd been singing for quite a while mm -hmm. before that, right? Right, I'd been singing for uh, oh, many years, a lot of years before that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, some of those years, too. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, <clears throat> like, in, in so many cases, the, uh, uh, the writer is the person who's more known for the writing, this kind of a, a faceless hero, so to speak. Right. Uh, they thought it'd be better without my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh... Hey, I know you. You're, <laughs> you're one of the pointless sisters. <laughs> <laughs> you married my sister. <laughs> Poinsettia, um, right. Oh, yeah. Um... Uh, let's see. Okay, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, how how do you really go about getting the songs cut? I mean, seriously, every every writer that that comes to town <coughs> or is scribbling away in an attic someplace wants to know how to do it. Did you just knock a lot of doors? Uh, yeah, probably all the wrong ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it it really is a. a very traumatic experience because when you uh, I don't know about other people but when I came to this town I was so dumb I didn't know twice around a knot hole about songwriting or how to get them cut or anything and uh, I guess I was just uh, uh, maybe naive enough to think that I could do it and maybe something would luck out and uh, I was just extremely fortunate that uh, you know that it happened that way that I did get some songs cut but it is a matter of uh, knocking on doors, talking to people, uh, keep pitching them songs, and keep trying to write them better. I, I would come home from uh, town and and uh, many, many, many days, you know, and say, they want something commercial. What the hell is commercial? <coughs> and I couldn't figure that out for a long time, what was commercial. And uh, finally it dawned on me. You know, I guess I just hit a groove where it was commercial, and uh, and I don't know really when that happened, but it just seemed like I guess I maybe analyzed what uh, what the other things that were hits at that time. You know, who who was your first uh, big artist that cut something of yours? Charlie Pride. Had you had anything cut by? Uh, hey, that's not too bad. <laughs> had you had anything cut by? Uh, um, lesser-known artists before that or did you come right out of the barn with Charlie Pride cuts well he was uh, I guess he was about the first uh, no I'll take that back I, I'd had uh, 
a couple of cuts on small labels by uh, people I, you know, that uh, never got to be up there on the charts and stuff. But Charlie was, um, he was the first big artist that ever cut one of my songs. He cut two of them, as a matter of fact, at the same time. Uh, did you work? <coughs> with, did you sign on with a writer exclusively with the publishing company about that time, or? Yeah, I, I signed with uh, Roz Tense Music, which is owned by Charlie's wife, Rosine, and uh, and her sister, Hortense. Uh, and I wrote for them for a year. Oh, did you? Uh, during that time, did you get anything cut by other artists no. while you were writing? For, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I didn't get anything cut out of that catalog. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I didn't get anything else cut because I was writing for them at that time. And who did you write for next? Uh, from there, I went to... Uh, let me think. Well, I had, uh, I've had i got a lot of songs in in a lot of different uh, companies that I, where I wasn't a staff writer. I just would give them publishing on it. So I've got them in many, many companies in town. <clears throat> but I went as a staff writer to... Uh, um, for Garpax, that's Gary Paxton's company, uh, and I wrote for him for about nine months, something like that, and uh, never got any cut there either. Uh, it wasn't until uh, I signed with Danner Music right after that that I started really getting the cuts, and that was uh, when I started writing a lot with Troy Seals, and. Uh, we had a <coughs> very high <coughs> uh, rate of uh, success getting uh, getting our songs cut. We had, uh, I think, the first year was like we had 35 cuts or something. Like oh that. my goodness! Which was wonderful, you know, after <laughs> such a long dry spell. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, you've had what uh, over 150 songs actually cut. Right. Is that correct? And I understand that. Mm, about a hundred and over, well over a hundred are, are major artists. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Right. And ha you have had songs that have been covered by other artists. I mean, uh, several times. Right. I've several had cuts on some songs. Have you? Some. Yeah. Uh, I've had mm -hmm. some songs cut uh, thirteen, fourteen times. My goodness. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, they don't get wore out. They Would you it doesn't hurt me. <laughs> It, it just, uh, I wonder, how, okay, the ones that have been cut time and time again, were they kind of particular favorites of yours? Did you think they were some of the best things that you wrote? Or yeah. Did you? Uh, they, were, they were some of my favorite songs. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, <clears throat> you know, speaking of this, everything is relative. Uh, when you're talking about, you know, like I've had 13 or 14 cuts on some songs, 10 on another uh you know, nine on another, six on another, and everything like that. But everything is relative, you see. The, I know you remember Eddie Miller, mm -hmm. the songwriter here. The last time I talked to him before he died, I asked him how many times release me had been cut, and he said, at that count, 960 times. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, you know, my, my little puny 13 times doesn't mean much. Huh. <clears throat> But uh, it just shows uh, that a uh, you know a good song is a good song, and uh, you know someday it'll be you know hopefully uh, if it's that good, why well, then uh, maybe someday it'll be that big hit. Um, how do you feel about like uh, you're you're a singer and a good one? I know I've heard your work Thank and you. you're a very good singer. Uh, do you have any? Uh, plans to pursue that further than uh, or what's going on huh huh I'll just try and see if the machine was running oh is this well of course not always going to hear this tape that you didn't uh, but you didn't. Yeah, I know <laughs> but uh I just wanted to make sure we wasn't just sitting here talking oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit vain I want to be on that tape uh -huh, okay no I I just Shitting you, I just practiced it. <laughs> You're gonna erase this damn thing. I'm gonna go out and do an article on Tom Davies. <laughs> okay, um, 
no, uh, okay, no, really. How do you feel about singing your own material? I mean, like if you had to go out and do a whole show, let's say you had to do a two-hour show, uh, how much of your own material do you think you'd put in that show? Or, uh, I mean, seriously. Well, it depends. Uh, when I was in, uh, when I did the uh, tour of uh, of England and Scotland last year, uh, I did probably fifty uh, percent of my own and fifty percent of uh, other people's material. Uh, However, uh, I some of the reviews that I got from that, uh, they they wanted me to do more of my own material of which the record company over there told me not to do more of my own material and so it was like a case of bad advice if, uh, when I go do it again I'll do more of my own material I see <clears throat> uh, have you been to Europe more than once? yeah I was uh, <clears throat> I went in uh, 80 80 and 81 both uh done a lot of shows, uh, TV shows and stuff. Uh, they have uh, twice I've done, uh, two years in a row I did the um, the Freddie Quinn show over there which has like 25 million viewers and uh, that's a lot. Yeah, well why uh, why do you not perform more here in, in uh, the States than uh, you do? Uh, is it because you don't care to travel? Nobody asked me. Oh, <laughs> we will probably leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good. Oh, I think uh, probably the biggest reason is uh, <clears throat> is that um, people know that I'm a writer and uh, probably assume I don't want to go do things like that. But uh, wrong. <laughs> I I I do uh, I I don't want to go do too much of it because I I do like to be home. Uh, you know, I love being around the house here and I get a lot of writing done and stuff uh, but I, I do like to go out and do a certain amount of shows and this year has not been I've, I've not done nearly as much of it as I wanted to this year uh, there was a you know some magazines I was reviewing just a recent article on uh, how how writers who are also singers have had to choose kind of sometimes like there was an article on even Stevens who has had to quit performing very much in order to concentrate enough on his writing and that type of thing and he was just one but there were several different ones that that was true about if you were if you had kind of a heavy performance schedule do you, do you think your writing would suffer uh, uh i i don't think so i don't think it would uh, <clears throat> i've never been in that particular situation but uh, i think the more you live life you know, the more things you have to write about and uh, the more situations you run into. And, uh, you know, it's always good to, to kind of rekindle, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know, maybe just to find new fuel for uh, songwriting, I guess. Actually, it might enhance your writing then if you get back out on the road. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh how do you write? This this is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I, I intend to ask everybody I interview, all the writers that I interview. Do you have a uh, kind of a pattern you follow, or is it just when it hits you, or do you write on demand, or uh, does it put a lot of pressure on a writer who's on a salary type thing? Is what I'm I guess what I'm asking. No, there's no pressure whatsoever on me. <laughs> I suppose there is pressure on uh, <clears throat> on some writers, but. Uh, the company I'm with, they know that uh, that you see. I'd be writing. Uh, I don't ever want them to know this, but I'd be writing for nothing if they didn't pay me. <laughs> I mean, because I, I love I to not write. Quote you on that, right? No, don't quote. <clears throat> but uh, I, I love to write, and uh, uh, so I mean, when the when I do write, I can't help myself. You know, I mean, it's it's just overwhelming when I do write. I must do that. That's the thing I must do. And uh, uh, I've sat down and tried to write when, when I just felt like I needed to. Maybe I was in a dry period or something. And it just doesn't work. I'm like an infant trying to build a house. It doesn't work. I just uh, completely blank and blind, you know. 
but when the juices flow, why? Well, then I must write. I don't have any choice. Do, do your ideas kind of come to you more <clears throat> more in uh, in words than than tunes, or does it kind of a melody run through your head first and you write words to it? Or well, usually or the words, uh, the words usually the idea or something comes first, and then I try to work it around a melody or something. Now you write with quite a few other writers from time to time, don't you? Mm -hmm. uh, you want to tell me some of them that you, that you write with? Well, I write an awful lot with Troy Seals, uh, past tense and, and present. You know, we've written for several years together, quite a few years together. And uh, we've, we still have an awful good, um, uh, I, I guess you'd say, uh, what would you say? A real good record Rapport, of, uh, uh, I mean, a good, a good record of getting our stuff cut. Yeah, I, uh, I've heard a lot of the stuff that <coughs> you and me and Troy have co-written is it's just beautiful it sounds like it just feels like a real wedding of, uh, of two really fine writers uh, who else do you write with Vance? Uh, recently I've been writing with uh, a lot with Bern Gosden and also with Royce Kendall of the Kendalls and uh, I've written with uh, a lot of different people there's been uh, mm, Frank Dykus well a very well-known writer um, I've written with Marvin Rainwater. I've written with uh, Rayburn Anthony. Wrote a lot of stuff with him. Um, well, there's just been a, a lot of people. Harlan Sanders, right? Raleigh Squires. Raleigh Squires. Um, I, I, I just leave anybody to out. Your yeah. memory here because <clears throat> I don't want to leave anybody out. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's but why I want to make sure we get them all down. That you mm -hmm. want to get, get that. Of course, I write with uh, write a lot with my publisher, who is Robert John Jones. I don't write a lot with him, but uh, we sit down to write once in a while, and we always come out with a real good song, a very cuttable song. So now, does he also manage you? Mm -hmm. And he's with the. He's with the management group. What's which group is it managing? What's the name of the group? The management group. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat. Never mind. Uh, and how long have you been with Robert John? Well, a total now of about uh, four years. And uh, fixing to resign. No, we don't need to say anything. We don't need to talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> What like I, I like to get a little bit of human interest out of all you guys. And uh, aside from music, is there anything particular about yourself that you care to contribute to this? I mean, do you have any neat little hobbies or or? Uh, well, I think uh, the away from the music. Maybe the world ought to know that uh, I'm really a sex symbol. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly kept that well hidden. Well. Actually, somebody called me a name one day, and I thought they meant that I was a sex symbol. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we might leave just that little piece about the sex symbol in there. Uh, not the whole thing, because nobody would understand the in-house joke, right? <clears throat> uh, let's see. No, don't leave the part about No, I know. Okay, what, uh, let's see. You, why don't you put just a little little bit of plug in here for Max Troy? I'll okay. ask you something about. Right. Okay, get his name. Yeah, I've been writing too. with him too. That's. Uh, oh God, I forgot about him. <laughs> I can't do that. Okay, uh, all right. Now we'll take we'll, getting into this, getting back into. I'll split, cut that in between out. But uh, then also now take it up from there where you're writing with uh, your son. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, also, I, uh, I've been writing um, quite a few things with my son, Max Troy Barnes. And uh, recently, uh, he's been going uh, in the studio with me to do uh, demos and masters. Uh, he's a lead guitar player. Who does he work for? Uh, he, he, he's on the road now with Joe's son. Great. And uh, he backs Joe's son, and uh, he gets to sing a few songs on the show. and. Also, he backs Vern Gosden on this tour that they're with right now. Mm -hmm. So, 
you've uh, you've done a little bit of producing too, haven't you? Yes, I have. How do you like that? I love it. I I, I think probably eventually that may be what I turn into. Uh, hopefully, you know. I mean, when I, when I if there ever comes a day when I can't write or don't want to write anymore, that that would be my choice of what I should do. So you've really done it all. You're a singer, a musician, a writer. Uh, you've done some producing. Uh, have you? You've never been in publishing, have you? No, I haven't. But I uh, I'll probably get into that too. Uh, it um, it's a kind of a long hard struggle to get a publishing company on its feet and uh, it takes uh, at least two or three years to where you really have to work hard and put a lot of money and time and effort into it to get it off the ground and then you're never sure you know whether it's going to work or not so I, I just uh, at this point in my life I'm not uh, I'm not ready to try that right now uh, your wife, Patsy, used to sing with you, didn't she, back when you were younger? Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, a real good singer. Uh, does she write some, too? Yeah, she's written some songs with me. As a matter of fact, she she just got her first cut, uh, oh, I guess it's been about nine, ten months ago, uh, a song that she and I wrote uh, for Vern Gosden. What was that? That was called uh, My Baby Sings the Blues. Great. Down on Broadway. Uh, would you consider yourself a gentleman farmer out here? In well, you got the last part right. <laughs> 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 it's I, I guess I'm not the farmer that I thought I was, though. Uh, I'm a, we bought this place uh, about six or eight months ago, and uh, well, you know the the thing that I is so strange to me. I was a uh, I come from the country, and I couldn't wait to get out and go to the city to make my fortune so I could buy me a place back in the country. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure that this is where I want to be. I, th I think we're going to move back to the Hendersonville, to the back on the lake. Uh, yeah, I understand that you have a pretty nice boat. Do you get to spend much time on it? Yeah, we like it. It's a, it's an old boat, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's big. We can take a lot of people out on it. We spend an awful lot of time on it in the summers. Have a lot of parties and not not booze parties, but you know, uh, well, you can bring booze if you like. But. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Stop this for a minute so I can get my train of thought. Okay, you're going to be doing what now? I'm I'm going to be doing a. A songwriter seminar at one of the colleges. Uh, I don't have the name of the college right here in front of me, but at one of the colleges in the next couple of weeks. And uh, they called me to do that the other day, and uh, you know I really wanted to do it because maybe it'll help. Maybe I can help someone, you know, to uh, you know further their career or something as a songwriter. That's great. I think it's nice that for for those of you who have attained achieved some success in songwriting, to pour a little bit back into creative things like that mm -hmm. for other writers, for young writers trying to come up. Well, the whole, <coughs> uh, all the people that will be there at that seminar are taking courses in songwriting. So it's not like I'm talking to people who are taking, you know, agriculture. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, unrelated. Yeah. thing so it should be a very interesting thing to do mm -hmm. um, who, uh, let's see okay, I might have a good question for you not run past my head oh if, if you couldn't uh, like if <coughs> if you had not really made your mark as a writer and whatever and if that had to pack up and go back home what do you think that what would you like to have done maybe well, not even pack up and go home. But if you couldn't be doing what you're doing today, what would be your second choice to do something with a willing hand, so to speak? Well, I'd probably uh, go back to driving a semi like I used to. Did you like that that much? Well, it was. Uh, I liked it all right, except that that was a 
10 year period in my life uh, that where my kids were growing up and that's the part I didn't like because uh, I didn't get to be home with them as much as I wanted to but they're all raised and uh, so you know it, if I couldn't do what I'm doing now that's probably what I'd be doing so Max Barnes is going to be just keep cranking out those songs you know what one thing that really impressed me going through the list of what you have here is a wide variety of people who have cut your songs you're not you haven't just been cut by country artists you have people like uh Dobie Gray and George Burns, the George Burns, and mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Well, anyway, I'll put this other stuff in here, you know, as I do the tape. But uh, so you don't really, you just sit down and try to write good music. You don't uh, necessarily just write it and gear it towards country. Is that correct? No, uh, but sometimes it's kind of like uh, write on order. You know, uh, if I know, because uh, I know a lot of the artists personally, and, uh, uh, you know, they'll say, well, write me a song about this or that. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Conway had, had called and said he wanted a good-feeling summer-type song, um, you know, just kind of like 50s, leaning toward 50s, uh, that type of thing, and so we wrote... Uh, Redneck and Love Make a Night, which turned out to be a number one song for him. He, he cut it so fast that uh, we didn't even get a chance to demo it. Uh, Troy just sang it with a guitar. And, uh, oh, you didn't do a studio Didn't even do a demo on it. It was <coughs> cut very soon after we, like three or four days after we wrote it. I, I would think that'd really be neat to write on order like that, you know. Also, the uh, uh, Conway and Loretta wanted us to write something for them when they were doing duets together and uh, this was in 77 I guess it was and uh, we sat down and wrote I Can't Love You Enough and 11 from 7 till 10 we wrote both of those the same night and consequently they turned out to be their singles for 1977-1978 which were hits. They, one of them went to number two and the other one went to number four. Don't hold on to things like old pictures you bring. Don't read those old letters again. Just plain you the that lies born in your heart. Let the rest of the
Yeah.